I have something to admit. Every video I write a script, I jot down what I wanna say, I make sure I'm gonna say it this way, but today, no script. We're making kidneys. Everybody should know how to use a knife. Use everything, waste nothing. Let's start at the beginning. It ain't that hard, okay? Welcome back to Bourdain. My name is Mitch May. I hope you're doing well. We are working through every recipe in this cookbook. Today we're rocking out with kidneys. Also, I'm going to whip up some French fries because I figure if these taste like piss and I don't enjoy them, at least we'll have crispy, crunchy, ethereal French fries to go along with it. And I have a little bit of feel. I'm getting ahead of myself. As for the kidneys, never touched them before, never tried them before. We're gonna cook them. If you'd like, I have Anthony Bourdain's cookbook linked down below in the description of this video. Let's get moving. We're gonna start with the French fries because we gotta blanch them. AB's got a whole big old section on how to make proper French fries. And something I really like about this, it is kind of niche. Working in the restaurant, you've seen it. There's a little tiny thing I noticed and throughout the theme of this book, see this mat here, how that's broken? Like that is a true mat from a restaurant. And in this book, there's many instances that you can tell this is like just restaurant picks. The palm puree. Mashed potatoes, okay, they look beautiful, sure. But something I noticed, either that's AB or some other dude, he has like a dirty thumbnail, which yes, that is what you see in the restaurants. The dude's whipping up the food. They got grime and food stuck under their fingers. I'm rambling on, roughly peel a spadato. This is an Idaho boy. And fun fact, I've never made real French fries, just fried up, classically delicious. That looks nice. And then we can use this little John to dig in there. I don't know how essential this is, especially for these kind of rustic fries. I'm gonna do it cause I am obsessive. All right, that looks good. It's just gonna give myself flat bottom to cut on. And now we slice in two half inch by one centimeter thick sticks. This is always something I wanted to do, just make French fries. I could go the traditional route with steak frites, but let's do steak kidneys. Now we're gonna put these in some ice water. I need a bowl. I don't know if this needs to be ice water. If you do, fire away in the comments, please. Fries go into our pot. AB has us let those hang out for about half an hour. It's time to reveal the kidneys. So far I've eaten liver, tongue, jellyfish once, never touched kidneys. And you know what? Pretty cheap, not gonna lie, pretty cheap. So if you're ever trying to save some money and you need some protein, get some urine filtering organ meat. Those are interesting looking. Awful. There we have it. They don't look too bad. Smell like nothing, which is a good sign. Wow, those are, those feel so weird. I've only seen these in biology class. What a unique, wow, unique texture to these things. I'm just gonna get rid of that little nodule, whatever this is. They did a great job preserving these. Shout out to Bringhurst, shout out to Keegan. I'm actually kind of excited. If these taste good, they save a lot of money. That's a good thumbnail. We're gonna season these with salt and pepper. Let osmosis do its thing. Those look good. Now we're gonna prep our potatoes. I got some peanut oil here. I'm just gonna glug this in the pot about three, four inches worth. Peanut oil is what AB used. Gonna let that come up to temperature. So while that oil is coming up to temp, I am going to bread up a little veal cutlet I had from a past dish I made. So we set up a little frying station. Here's the tiny little strip of veal. I have way too much going on here, but is what it is. Give this a whisk. Worth noting, I have a little salt and pepper in the egg. These breadcrumbs are already seasoned and I don't have any flour or seasoning in there. Dump our veal into the flour, make a nice mess. Into our egg wash, very inconvenient tiny bowl. One thing I kind of like about cooking that channels my ADD in a way is you get to sort of stack the deck. In other words, things are doing things while I'm doing things. Terrible explanation, but we have our kidneys drying out a little bit from the salt. We have our oil coming up to heat. And while we got some spare time, we're gonna make a veal cutlet. This I'm just gonna plop over with our veal. Why do I keep with our kidneys? 180, all right, I'm happy with that. Two, three degrees over, that's completely fine because we're gonna dump our fries in there, which are gonna knock down the heat a little bit. I'm not too happy with how much water we still have on these frizz. Just gonna give them a quick pat down. Quick jostling. And they are chilled, so if that temperature comes up to like 190, 195, I'm fine with that. It's gonna drop. A little stir. All right, 180, 183. Just gonna kind of gauge that, monitor it. Oh, a little hot. 
a little hot. Just gonna play around with that and blanch them for the time required. I do wonder if I could accomplish the same thing with water, having it be less caloric and also maybe saving some dirtying of oil. I don't know. Let me know in the comments, please. The fries are kind of speaking to me. There's less bubbling going on. They've reached a nice opaque color. They're actually breaking apart, so we overcooked them. It's okay. Just gonna let them vibe out on our grate as I spill them. We have our cooked Frenchy fries. Some are a little overdone. They are definitely done. Something kind of interesting. If you look here, how could you not? There's liquid that came out of them. And that is through osmosis. The salt draws out the moisture in the process, seasoning the meat. Now I think with cooking any type of offal, offal, whatever the word is, organ meat, the fear is undercooking and overcooking. I don't wanna die, but I also don't wanna chew on a rubber. Kinda go with my gut here. First starting with a medium high pan, not a ripping hot pan, because we are going to add butter and butter burn. Let's see how we do. Cook them for two minutes on each side. I don't know what this stuff is. Reduce the heat to medium and cook for two minutes more. And I'm just gonna go in with some thyme to hopefully make it taste a little sweeter, or something like that. Oh, that one needs more time. Fun fact, apparently basting doesn't do anything. Oh, wow. Give it a flip. I don't know what that is. Uh, that one is done. That one's finished. Pull that off. Doesn't smell too bad at all. Bloody juice in there though. Don't know what to make of that. I'll we'll put our thyme on top. Let that hang out there. And now we're gonna make our sauce and fry the fries. Discard the fat from the pan and add the remaining tablespoon of butter. Cook the shallots in the butter until soft about three minutes. Shallots are sauteing up. As for our oil, it's at a pretty nice temp. It's actually a little hotter than I would like. Our fries are gonna knock that down. In they go, good luck soldiers. Ooh, dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. Let's get that finger away. It's gonna give him a quick little stir. I actually turned off the heat. That shit ain't on but we have a lot of residual shit going on here. Now we add a quarter cup of white wine, ratchet that up over medium high heat, scrape up all those delicious bits, check on our Friday. It's actually Thursday. Now they're floating to the top and I think that's actually like a sign. They're getting really close to being done. Come on back to our sauce, which is looking nice. The wine is reducing. It's really kind of a preference on how much wine flavor you want. If you want more wine flavor, don't reduce as much. Chicky stock. Let that reduce over medium high. You know, we're gonna jack it up with two little Johns of Demi Glass. Let that come up, turn back to our fries. I'd say it's time to pull. We're gonna put them in this bowl filled with paper towel and a little cheesecloth. Those are looking nice and golden brown. Look at that, just like the picture. Give them a toss. And we hit them with some salt. Taste test. That's a good fry. <laughs> Ethereal light, whoo! And guess what time it is now? The veal cutlet. I'm gonna drop it in like I've seen a few TikTokers do. I don't know what the hell that does. <laughs> uh, shit. okay, back here. Got our sauce still cooking down. Our cutlet's looking happy. It might have too much heat though, so I'm relieving it from the burner. And that thing is nothing short but GBD. User, followed by a whole bunch of numbers and letters, actually called me out on liver, how it shouldn't smell like urine. Think about subscribing, think about joining my journey, think about supporting me because more videos will come your way. And I also have some little surprises. Turn off the heat and whisk in the mustard. So I'm thinking I'm just gonna slice as thin as Bourdain says, maybe add our little French fries and we are going to dive right in here. Slice the kidneys and arrange them on the serving platter, then spoon the sauce over them and serve. Yeah, that's how much ketchup I use. Here goes nothing, or a lot of something. For the first time, I'm expecting it to be chewy. I'm expecting it to be like nothing I've ever tasted before. I think that tastes better than the heart I made. The sauce is really wonderful. I kind of need to just try the kidney without any juice. That ain't bad. It tastes like a mild liver, like chicken liver. I mean, yeah, that looks funky as but it tastes good. There are some bits I could see myself chewing on until I'm 30, but the flavor is very nice. We have our nicely fried veal cutlet. 
To me, it tastes like chicken. That's why I struggle with buying veal. Well, speaking of that liver video, I have it linked over here if you want to check it out. Thank you for spending your time with me. This was Back to Bourdain. Stay organized and clean up after yourself. You do the best you can. Mm-hmm.